So welcome back everyone, Triple M here. Today we're taking a quick look at the new Amazon Fire TV Stick Lite. So if you guys aren't aware, Amazon released two new Fire Stick. There's a regular Fire Stick and then there's a light version. Now these are both priced below the Fire TV Stick 4K. And while they have similar specifications, there are some differences that you should know about. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Fire TV Stick Lite as well as the price point. And please drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know if it's worth the savings to go with the light version over the regular fire stick or over the fire tv stick 4k and in the end i'll let you know my thoughts on the matter let's go ahead and jump into it So if you're new to the channel, I do everything tech from your streaming reviews, streaming news, product reviews, unboxings, and everything in between. Hit that subscribe button in the top right, smash the notification bell, make sure you select all on notification. That way you won't miss a video or a giveaway. So before we get into the unboxing, the speed test, the benchmark, let's go over the price and specification. So the Fire TV Stick Lite, which we're taking a look at today, is $29. The Fire TV Stick, is 39 and the Fire TV Stick 4K is $49. So some of the main differences that you should know about right out the box is that the Fire TV Stick Lite does not have any control for your TV guys. There's no volume up and down button. There's no power button on the device. There's no IR blaster inside of the remote to control those devices. Now limited CEC functionality does work and we'll jump into that here in a little bit. But the other two devices does have that capability. Now as far as the supported audio, we do have HDMI pass through for Dolby Atmos. The other two devices do have regular Dolby Atmos. So the picture quality on both new Fire Sticks are going to max out at 1080p at 60 frames per second. So that's definitely one of the other big things you need to take a look at. If you have a 4K television, if you enjoy watching 4K content, you should definitely skip these two devices and just jump right to the Fire Stick 4K. Now the storage for all three devices is going to be the same, processor is going to be the same, and both work with the Amazon Ethernet adapter. So like I said before, the processor is going to be the same, internal storage is going to be the same, you're going to have dual band Wi-Fi. And one more thing to keep in mind is that the Fire TV Stick Lite and the Fire TV Stick only has one gig of RAM versus 1.5 on the Fire TV Stick 4K. But you do have Bluetooth 5.0 compatibility. Voice support is gonna be the same. Ports, it's gonna be HDMI, you're gonna have a micro USB. The support audio, HDMI, audio pass-through for Dolby Digital, Dolby Digital Plus, as well as Dolby Digital at most. The video content is HDR10, HDR10 Plus, HLG, H265, 264, and VP9. As far as the output resolution, it's either gonna be 1080p at 60 frames or 720p at 60 frames per second. So that's basically, it doesn't list the video, which is kind of weird, even though the other devices do have the video specification listed. Also, you should know that the remote does not have the volume control, doesn't have the power button up here to power your device on and off. Instead, it has a little TV button right there which should bring up the guide for your preferred streaming service. So that's all we need to know about the specs. I'll leave a link where you guys can go ahead and check it out on Amazon. But remember that the only difference between the light and the regular Fire TV stick is that the regular Fire TV stick still has the volume up and down, the mute, does have the power button up here as well. You can use it to control the device, but the resolution is still gonna be 1080p and 720p up to 60 frames per second. As far as what's in the box, you do have a Hello booklet. It's a, essentially a quick start guide. It's gonna get you all set up on the device, how to plug it in, tell you the capabilities, how to get the remote connected, how to install the batteries, the basic stuff that comes with every Amazon device. Now with this purchase, you also get one year of the Food Network on Amazon. So if you guys are interested, definitely take advantage of that. We also get the micro USB, and this is gonna be for power, of course. This one is pretty long. It's about a, a five and a half foot cable. So this is gonna be plugged into your power brick. So here's the power brick for the actual device. Here's it compared to the Fire TV Stick 4K power brick. And just looking at it, you can tell the difference there, guys. It's a lot smaller and the wattage and voltage does show that it just requires less power than the Fire TV Stick 4K. 
Of course, you do get the standard HDMI extension with Amazon devices. That way you do have room to maneuver it if you were to plug it in in the back of your television. You get two Amazon AAA batteries. Those are for the remote. And of course, you get a new Fire TV Stick Lite remote. So we talked about the differences there. You can see no volume up and down, no power button in the top right. You get a microphone, the navigation. You also get your back home menu button, fast forward, play, pause, rewind, as well as the guide button in the middle. And again, here's a side by side comparison of the Fire TV Stick 4K remote versus the Fire TV Stick Lite remote. So here's the Fire TV Stick itself. And of course, this is Lite version again. So same ports there, we have the HDMI up top, we have the micro USB on the side. If you look at the side-by-side -side comparison, you can see it's a little bit shorter than the Fire TV Stick 4K. Uh, the width is gonna be the same as well as the depth. So just a little bit shorter, and that's gonna be the difference there. So that's the overall look of the new Fire TV Stick Lite. Let's go ahead and get it set up get into the benchmark and see what we can do on this device. Now set up the device was pretty straightforward. If you ever set up an Amazon device before, especially if you already have an account, all you need to do is basically connect to your Wi-Fi, sign into your account. You can do this either on the computer or on the device itself. And for this, it had a software update and there's a major change that I'll let you guys know about here in a little bit. And this concerns how you can install third-party applications. So it did a firmware update and then I was able to get into the user interface. Now the user interface was pretty straightforward. It's just as responsive as it is on the other Fire TV stick. Remember that this is actually running most of the same internals, guys. So if you only have a 1080p or 720p television, you would not essentially know the difference between this and a 4K device. Now, even though this does not have the volume up and down or the IR blast, you do have CEC control still. So if you go into your menu, you do see that control there. And this actually works because I did test it on one of my televisions. So how this will work is that if you turn off your TV and the Fire TV stick goes to sleep, if you hit the home button, it will wake up the Fire TV stick as well as the television. So it does have limited functionality there. It does work, but kind of defeats the point because in my case, it did not turn off my television when it went to sleep. Maybe most televisions will automatically shut off after a while, but if this is able to turn your TV on on wake up, it should be able to turn it off on wake up. If you guys are experiencing something else, please drop it in the comment section below. Now, as far as installing third-party applications, and uh, it is still straightforward. They did make some changes with the new firmware, with the new update, and you will start to see this on your older Fire TV devices as well. So before, if we went down, went to unknown sources, all we had to do is just turn it on, and then we had the freedom to install those third-party applications. So now what's happening, and you need to go in, and you need to set that for each individual application that you want to use to install third-party applications on. So for instance, if I want to use download, I can go ahead and swap that on. If I have Chrome, if I have Analyti, and I want to use those to install third-party applications, I can go ahead and do so. Also, if you forget to do it in the menu, if you go into download or and try to install something, you don't have that set, it will prompt you on the screen. That way you can go ahead and just quickly go to your settings and turn it on. So you can see here, I was able to go into my file link. I was able to install Google Chrome. Uh, that's one way to install third-party applications guys you can install it from downloader you can install it from google chrome you can even install it from analyti using the web check option so if you guys have any questions about installing third-party applications just drop it in the comment section let me know also if there's any apps that you need that's not in my file link store just let me know and i'll see if i can go ahead and get it for you now one more thing that i did test is the otg cable on this new device. Uh, this is the OTG cable that I'm using, guys. It's, it looks funky, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's one micro USB that go into your device. On the other end, you have four more ports hanging off. So one port is gonna be for your power brick, and the other ports become USB ports, essentially. So you can use one for your USB storage. You can use one for wireless keyboard and mouse. You can use one for wired ethernet adapter. So you can go ahead and connect your USB to ethernet to this device, and then you can wire your device in with an ethernet cable. So if you guys are having Wi-Fi issues, that might be one thing that you might wanna take a look at. Now I did do a speed test, both wireless and wired, and here are the results. So for the wireless, I actually got better speeds than I did wired. So wireless, I was getting around 217 download and about 23 upload. Now keep in mind that I am paying for 400 megabits per second and 20 download. So even though my speeds are cut in half, it's still 
pretty reliable. I can see this being an issue if you're only paying for, let's say, 20 or 30, and then you're getting 15. But for me, it doesn't matter that much. As far as the wire connection, I was getting even lower than that. I was getting 171 download and about 21 upload. So as for the reason why that is lower, in most cases, it's either going to be the driver on the device for that wireless adapter or the OTG adapter itself. I'll go ahead and leave links to the OTG adapter that I'm using as well as the Ethernet adapter that I'm using. If you guys have better results with other devices, please drop it in the comment section below. Now, I also did a full benchmark and I was actually surprised at the scores. The uh, score was 453 overall. My graphics score was a 403, which two tests were performed. And also my physics score, which measures the CPU, was a 797. Now, this was pretty surprising because it actually scored a little bit higher than the Fire TV Stick 4K. The score on my Fire TV Stick 4K was uh, overall 430. Graphic score was a 382 and the physics score was a 762. A couple things could come in the factor, including the need for better graphics display on the 4K or could also be the fact that I have more applications running in the background on my Fire TV Stick 4K. One thing I need to do in the future is probably just wipe both devices and try to run this test all over again. But you can see that the overall performance states that the Fire TV Stick Lite was better than 17% of devices that performed this test. And the Fire TV Stick 4K was better than 16% of the devices. So just a little edge, not much in between, could fall within the margin of error, but I wouldn't take too much stake on this test because they were so close together. So my overall feel for this device. So you have three devices to choose from. You have the Fire TV Stick 4K, the Fire TV Stick, and the Fire TV Stick Lite. If you don't have a 4K television and you don't plan on getting one in the near future, I would go with the middle device and go with the Fire TV Stick. Uh, this one is $39.99. It doesn't have 4K, still 1080p, but it has those controls. You can reliably power the device on and off. You do have the volume controls as well as the mute, and you have a close experience to what you'll get from the Fire TV Stick 4K. If you have a 4K television or plan to upgrade one, just go with the Fire TV Stick 4K. I can't pick a scenario where I can recommend the Fire TV Stick Lite over the other two devices. And this is not because of the display. This is not because of the speeds. For the simple fact that you don't have those controls on the remote. It's missing a lot just knowing that you need a second remote to control your volume or to mute your television. It doesn't make sense to me. I also tested the guide button. So when I clicked it first, it brought up Sling, it brought up some recommended applications. But when I actually log into my Hulu Plus Live TV, it was not compatible. So so if that guide button was implemented properly, they would have put it on the other devices as well. For me, it's just something to put there to throw us a bone, but it's something that's not essentially needed or not that functional. I'll leave links to all three of these devices in the description. If you have any questions, drop it in the comment. Smash your thumbs up on this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.